My name is Gabriela Mai. I'm a photojournalist and I work in uh, the Middle East and Central Asia. The, the story of Almond Garden, which was a story that took uh, just over five years to, to tell, what I have uh, tried to tell with the voices of the women who have participated in this project is definitely only a part of the story. There were a hundred individuals that participated in this project. I was drawn to, um, to the stories of the women that I met. I'm always drawn to women's stories. I've always been interested in, uh, in communities of women and how women forge uh, friendships, how they forge support networks. And in Afghanistan, uh, the women's prisons that I spent time with were uh, were exclusively female worlds, which was something uh, which was something very special. Uh, women felt free to speak in a way that I think they they uh, definitely do not when there are men in, involved or present. Uh, it was a difficult way, but it was also a wonderful way to uh, to understand not only their individual experiences and stories, but the larger issues that affect uh, that affect women and girls in Afghanistan. The war and the battle uh, pertain very specifically to uh, women's bodies. Who owns a woman's body in Afghanistan? You know, the answer is that, that it's very much a patriarchal society. It's a society in which uh, religion, political forces, family, uh, specifically husbands and fathers, have, have a kind of control over women um, that, that is extreme and women who who uh, make the attempts to, to forge their own way or to break away from that sort of a system are uh, oftentimes penalized in extreme, in extreme ways. You know, you spend enough time sort of hearing, hearing the stories from these women and of course every story is unique and every story has its own, um, has its own kind of narrative structure and personal experiences, but there are reoccurring themes that you start to, you start to notice that um, that, 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 that many of the women who have had such, such similar experiences um, share and speak about. And with the young women, there, there was this, this kind of echo across the country that was so beautiful about education. It was, um, it was really, it was about education. These girls, they, they didn't talk about wanting um, clothing, cars, you know, material wealth. What they spoke about wanting was education. And that was very, that was very kind of indicative to me of how how powerful they understood it to be, but also how, how kind of unattainable it was. Like that was the ultimate fantasy to be able to, to go to school. So, so the hope and the desire is definitely there. Uh, it's just about continuing to, to, to kind of to, to, to fight for a space in which, in which, uh, in which those kinds of conditions uh, will make education for young girls and women in Afghanistan possible in the future.